a Jewish friend of mine gave me a recipe that he said was his grandmother's recipe for something called, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, kasha vernishkas. I'm not Jewish. I'm a New England white guy. So what do I know? That's as close as I think I can get it as far as the pronunciation. There were two things about this recipe that really appealed to me. One is it's made with pasta, and I love pasta. And the other is that it's made with caramelized onions, and I really like caramelized onions. The third major component is something I've never worked with before, whole buckwheat or buckwheat groats, which I had a tough time finding. I had to go to a Jewish deli that he told me about. And this is what I bought. And I had to ask, what is this? <laughs> Is this the right thing? It's all in Russian. I can't read any of this, but they assured me this was whole buckwheat. So that's what I want to make today. I want to make this kasha varnishkas. The onion is going to take the longest to cook because, as I mentioned, this has to be caramelized. And that's going to take 30 to 40 minutes to get them really well caramelized. So I'm going to start these first. You need a couple of medium onions of about maybe eight ounces each. That's 227 grams. I'm using one onion because this is nearly a pound. I'm cutting down through once and then I'm going to cut across this way because I want kind of like, I want this to, as for it's caramelized, I want these to be like strings. I think it'll give me a nicer texture to go with the pasta. The directions just say to cut the onions up coarsely. So I guess I would say chop them according to your comfort level, whatever you feel like doing. I'm heating a large cast iron skillet. You don't need to use cast iron, but I've got it and someone said, you've got it, why don't you use it in your videos? I'm putting in a good three tablespoons, I think here of fresh chicken fat. I say fresh because I gathered this up just yesterday when I made a lot of chicken stock. And this was the fat that came to the top. So I filtered it, saved it for this. There are my onions going in. And to caramelize onions, you start at a fairly high temperature. This is like medium high. But as this cooks and the moisture cooks out, you're going to turn the heat down lower and lower and lower until you're cooking finally at the lowest temperature. You don't want to brown the onions quickly on the outside. You want to slowly brown them all the way through. That's caramelized onions. And this could take 30 to 40 minutes. And there goes my timer. Okay, these have been cooking for 40 minutes and you can see how much those have caramelized down. I'm turning the heat off under these and then I can set these aside. I've got a medium saucepan here to which I'm going to add an egg and then I'm going to beat that up pretty well using a granny fork here. And then I'm going to add, this is one cup, which is 170 grams, 170 of buckwheat. This is whole buckwheat groats. And I'm going to stir that to coat everything well. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to bring the heat up under this pan to medium. And I'm going to start cooking this until the egg starts to look dry. I'm turning my heat off here. That looks pretty good. Egg is pretty much all cooked. I'm not seeing any moisture in there. That looks fairly dry. Now what I have here is two cups, which is 473 milliliters of chicken stock. This happens to be homemade chicken stock that I've been heating up to the boil. And I need to break this up, get it all separated again. I'm bringing this up to heat. I'm going to bring this up to a boil. 
while I'm doing this separating work here. This has come up to a boil. So I want to put a pinch of salt in there, not a big pinch, and then grind some black pepper in there. Give that a final stir with a fork. Put a lid on that, and then I'm going to move this to a back burner where I can cook that on a simmer for, I'm guessing, who knows, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it takes to see all that chicken stock absorbed. This took 20 minutes to get this pan to the point where there was no liquid in the bottom. So this has been cooked tender and dry. I've brought water to a boil in a saucepan. I'm going to add a good pinch of salt to that. And then what I have here is two cups, which is about three ounces or 85 grams by weight of bow tie pasta, otherwise known as farfalla. I'm using tricolor pasta or rainbow pasta because I think it'll look better on a plate. But standard white pasta should be fine. I need to cook this until it's al dente. Package directions say 12 to 14 minutes. I put my skillet back on the stove and I've got just a medium heat under this, more or less to warm this pan up. I cooked my pasta actually for 11 minutes because I didn't want to overcook it. And then I put my groats in there. And I just need to stir all this up until it's evenly combined. Okay. Take a little taste of that. I was going to need some salt. So I'll put a generous pinch of salt in there, stir that in, and then this should be ready to plate. I plated a little bowl of this for myself so I can enjoy this for kind of like a noontime lunch. I want to see what this tastes like. No. It is good. It's got a, a bit of a nutty flavor from the buckwheat. You can taste the onion in there. The pasta is good. Wow. I mean, it's mild. So I'd say this would be a good side dish to go with like a bold meat like lamb. But it's great. This is good stuff for my first experiment with it. So excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my Kasha Vernishkas. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website mobilehomegourmet.com and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.